Hey, this is Gretchen Men with Acoustic Guitar, and today we're going to be continuing our discussion that we started last month on talking about scales. So last month, your assignment, if you did it, and I hope you did, was to take the concepts that we discussed and apply them by yourself to the fretboard. And I cannot stress how helpful this is, because by forming the scales yourself, by looking at the shapes and having them be a natural outgrowth of your understanding, you get all these extra benefits. Not only do you strengthen your knowledge of the fretboard, but you also strengthen your knowledge and your understanding of major scales by having to form them yourself. And the other benefit is then you can take that understanding and on the fly reconstruct something. Say you forget a fingering, you forget um, how to form a major scale in a particular position. Well, you can always go back to your understanding and your knowledge of the fretboard and just figure it out right there. So you're never at the mercy of having memorized something. So I realize that what I'm asking you to do with these assignments by forming these things on your own is kind of might feel daunting, but I promise you it's going to be worth your while. We do live in a time that really places such a high premium on instant gratification, but that can be such an impediment to deeper learning. So be patient. If you're going to spend any time learning scales, why not really learn them? Why not own them? It'll be well worth it. It'll be an opportunity for you to grow as a musician, and isn't that the entire point? Okay, so after all of those cautionary words as to why you should figure this out first for yourself, I will take you through the way that I play the major scales. These are pretty typical ways of playing them, and you may find that they're similar or different to what you figured out. If you find that they are more comfortable for you, great, use them. If you find that you've come up with the fingering that you like better, great, you can use both. So as you go through each pattern, please resist the temptation to get mentally lazy, meaning that the, the tendency will be to just memorize patterns, which is what we're trying to avoid doing. So Really pay attention not to just each note that you're playing, meaning like E or F or G, but also the note in relation to the tonal center. So one way that you can keep mentally engaged and focused as you do this is say the notes out loud as you play them. That way you're definitely not just memorizing the pattern, but you're making sure that those patterns have musical meaning. Okay, so the beauty now of being really familiar with the theory and taking the time to map out the scales for yourself is you get a 12 for 1 deal here. So you've invested the time and energy to learn the scale and the patterns of C major. Now you can apply those patterns to every other scale. You just need to reorient by transposing them to the new tonal center. So as you start exploring other keys, what you'll start seeing is that they have sharps and flats attached to them. And that leads nicely into something you should know about, which is key signatures. So key signatures occur in a piece of music after the clef and before the time signature. And what they do is they say that these particular sharps or flats are to be associated with all the following notes unless they're somehow canceled by either another sharp or flat or by a natural sign. And it alleviates the burden of having to always put in F sharp, say, for any key that has sharps in it. Um, check out figure one. That'll be the better explanation so you can actually see what key signatures look like and see what the associated keys are to the particular signatures. There is a nice shortcut with, C with key signatures to be able to look immediately and see what key a piece of music is in. And the way I think about it is for sharp keys, the last sharp, you go up a half step. So if you see an F sharp, a half step up from that F sharp is a G, and that's the key of G major. Similarly, if you see a C sharp as the last sharp in the key signature, go up a half step to D, and that's your key of D major. For flats, the, key, the major key associated with it is the second to the last flat. So if you see a key signature with a B flat and an E flat, it means you're in the key of B flat major. So if you go about it this way, there's only really two key signatures you need to memorize because they don't follow that, or you don't get the clue that you need from it. So the key of C major, which has no sharps or flats, and the key of F major, which has only one flat. Okay, so let's talk about the minor mode for a second. So just like the major mode, it derives its sound from a pattern of half and whole steps. They just happen to fall in different places, and that's what makes minor sound like minor. So in the minor mode, you have your half steps between scale degrees 2 and 3 and 5 and 6. So let's actually take a look at what that would mean. So I recommend getting a piece of paper, writing this out so you can see it, understand it first, and then apply it to the guitar next. So if you were to start with the, uh, the note A and build an A minor scale, you have A, whole step to B, half step to C, whole step to D, whole step to E, half step between scale degrees 5 and 6, E to F, 
then whole step to G, and then back to your tonic of A. So looking at all of the notes of A minor, you'll notice that they are the same notes as in the key of C major. And that means that the two are called relative keys, meaning they share all the same notes even though they have a different tonal center. So this is example one, C major in the open position, starting on E. So that's what the notation is, but I suggest you also go in reverse. So this is C major, first position, starting on F. One thing I want to make a note about is that the fingering that, that I've written is the one that I use. Um, meaning using the second finger on the G. Some people prefer to use the third finger. It's just a question of do you prefer to do the, the stretch between your first and uh, second finger or between your third and fourth. I just happen to find that one easier, but you should do whatever feels most comfortable for you. So here we are, C major, starting on F. So this is C major, third position, starting on G. I'll also mention that even though this um, alternative fingering puts you in a different position because you shift back a fret, it's also a very common way that people like to play this particular shape. So instead of hitting the B here, you're hitting it here and moving back one fret. Okay, now C major, eighth position, starting on the root, the note C. Okay, C major, 10th position, starting on the note D. Now we'll go over C major at the 12th fret, starting on the E. It's um, the, same, the same pattern as on, at the open position, but this one will be movable because it doesn't have any open strings. So we're going to use the F major scale to get you started on really using the concept of movable shapes. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an F major scale, write it down first, look for your half and whole steps, and what you should get is F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F. So now we're going to start with the F on the low E string, and we're going to find those notes. So F, G, whole step, A, whole step, B flat. C, D, E, F. Is this starting to look familiar? G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F, G, A. You probably notice that looks exactly like the C major scale starting on the C. So this is exactly how you have these movable forms. You want to find a major scale starting on the root. Okay, locate your root on the low E string and play that form. That's why you get these 12 for 1 shapes. So again, starting from the understanding because we're trying to have everything be a natural outgrowth of that. Let's really think about the theory and let's go from there. So again, key of F major. We're going to be starting on the second scale degree. So we have G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat. So you 
you see those connect in exactly the same way as C starting on the C to C starting on the D. Okay, so now what I'm going to ask you to do is something similar to what we did with the major scales, but we're going to add one little twist to it. We're going to do the minor scales, but in order to actually really have your ear hear the new tonal center, you might be used to hearing things in C major right now, we're going to start with playing an A minor chord. Play it a few times if you need. If you have a backing track with a drone of A minor, great. And then we're going to play the notes. So we know that we have no sharps or flats. We'll start here on the low E string. E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then play again. If you want to play the chord throughout as well, if you're losing that tonal center, go ahead. E, F, G, A, B, C, and then continue. So now what I'm going to ask you to do for the minor scales is pretty similar to what we did for the major scales. So we're going to pick a key, let's start with A minor, that's the relative minor of C major. And first, write down the scale on a piece of paper and input the half and the whole steps. So again, you're really reinforcing that you know where those half and whole steps are and you're really starting to think in terms of minor. Then transfer the note names on the notation to a standard staff. If you don't have one, you can get one from the Acoustic Guitar website and there's a link. So once you've written out the notes and you have your scale in front of you, get your guitar and we're going to apply it to the guitar. So start actually with playing an A minor chord. This is going to be the one part that's different from your last assignment. The idea is to get that new tonal center in your ear. Otherwise it's easy to hear this still as C major. You've been playing a lot in C major. Get that in your ear and then start working out the notes. E, F, G, A, B, so forth. At the end, play A minor again. Play it anytime you feel like you lose that tonal center and then continue to work through the scales that way. Okay, so I get it that this involves quite a bit of mental concentration, but before you throw in the towel and get tempted to sneak a peek at other people's way of doing this, other fingerings, or just lapsing back into memorized finger patterns, something that I always try to remember is the classic philosophical saying, the I hear and I forget, I see and I remember, I do and I understand. So by doing this, you will be investing such better time spent. Good luck with it.